Hi, I'm Terry from Lacrosse Technology, and we're looking today at the WS1516 Professional Weather Station, which gives us wind direction and speed, rain, fall, and temperature and humidity. And we're just going to look at how we set that up. In setting it up, we start with the outdoor elements. And the first thing we're going to do is remove the hood from the temperature sensor and its battery door. And we're going to power up the wind sensor with it. So we'll put the wind sensor plug in to the jack on front of the temperature sensor. The sensor uses two alkaline batteries. We want to make certain we're using fresh name brand alkaline batteries. We're looking for dates on them, six years or more ahead of the current year. So in 2011, we're looking for batteries dated 2017 or later. And in the setup process, we're going to have these all together in the room. We're going to have about a 10 foot separation at most, five at least, between the sensors and the display. So I'm going to move this out of the way right now, and we'll put batteries into our rain sensor. To do that, we have two small tabs, and we simply push those tabs towards each other, and the rain sensor opens. And then we bring the top off of the sensor. And again, you have small clips that hold this on. We want to check to make certain that the metal clip is solidly mounted here. And we're going to put two AAA batteries in here. And we're looking again at the same uh, dating procedure. We want them to be uh, within the six, that six year range. You'll notice we actually are showing the direction that these batteries should go in. And we'll just drop those in here and put the top back on. When I do an initial setup, I usually don't put this portion on the top because I'm going to test to make certain the rain gauge is working properly by rocking this back and forth. We'll put this with the other sensors and bring the display unit in. The display unit has a removable uh, protector on it. You won't need that again, so it's just a matter of taking it off and discarding it. And uh, if it does leave some artifacts there, just pressing the set button a few times will get rid of those. Turn it upside down. Pressing the tab in towards the door opens our battery door. Okay, the battery system in here is three AA alkaline batteries. And the same caveat as far as uh, name brand and freshness dated batteries. You'll notice when battery three goes in, we get a small beep. Close our battery door, and if you're fast enough, you'll see all the segments lit up and a number up in this corner. That number is basically going to do nothing but uh, show you what the uh, system's uh, uh, firmware code is. This system has already picked up the sensors, which showing us that the outdoor temperature is 77 with 48 percent humidity. There's no wind speed. Uh, because it's sitting on the table. The wind is southwest simply because that's the direction the vane is pointing now. It will read the wind chill. Uh, wind chill is a meaningless number until you get to 40 degrees and lower. So when there's no wind, there won't be any wind chill. When it's above 40, the wind chill will virtually be identical to the outdoor temperature. We have atmospheric pressure, and we'll show you in a moment how to set that for your own relative pressure. Uh, pressure history display showing the pressure as it is now, 3, 6, 9, and 12 hours ago. Uh, you won't see any differences in those until it's been running for that 3 hour minimum. Uh, pressure tendency, there are arrows on either side of the sunshine there. Uh, again, you have to have a history. We just started this, but the arrows will point either up for rising pressure or down for lowering pressure. Clouds and sunshine are a forecast icon. There are three icons that can show uh, forecasting 12 to 18 hours in the future. The first icon is just sunshine. What that's saying is it'll be clear. Obviously not, it'll be sunny. 12 hours in the future might be the middle of the night. This icon is saying that the chances in 12 to 18 hours are partly cloudy sky. And the third icon has is overcast. There's no sun there. It's overcast clouds with little rain drops beneath it. 
and that isn't saying it's going to rain, but it's saying that the conditions are going to be right for overcast and possible precipitation. To set this unit up, we're using the set and the plus buttons. We press the set button and hold it, and our time is going to change in just a few moments to the letters LCD with a number behind, behind it. The flashing five is just the density with which the display shows. We can adjust it by pressing the plus button to go up to eight, and the min-max button to bring it down to lower numbers. Pressing the set button again, we set the time. The plus button changes the hour, which is flashing. We want to watch for AM and PM. The PM will show up to the left of the hour, just as it is now. Each click is one hour. We're going to set this for a little bit after 2 o'clock. Once we have the hour set, we press the set button again. The minutes will flash. It will make it 5 after. Pressing the set button again gives us a chance to change from a 12-hour clock to a 24-hour military-style clock. I'm going to leave it in 12-hour, and again, the plus button makes a helps us to make that decision. Pressing set again, we have the year flashing. It's no longer 2005, which is the uh, default. We're going to use the plus button to set it for the current year, 2011. Pressing set once again has the month flashing. It's not January, so we're going to change that. We're going to go to, uh, to uh, August, pressing set again. The day is flashing. It's not the first. So we're going to use our plus button once again to bring it to the current date, which in this case is the 11th. Pressing set once again allows us to choose between Fahrenheit or using the plus button Celsius temperatures. We'll press plus once again and go back to Fahrenheit. Pressing set once again allows us to decide if we want our wind speed to be in miles per hour or with the plus button, meters per second, or with the plus button, kilometers per hour, and back to miles per hour, which is where we're going to leave that. And if you notice, that change shows up right after the wind speed. Pressing set once again allows us to decide how do we want our rainfall to show up. You'll notice the word rain down here and inches over to the side. Do you want inches? Plus button, millimeters. I'm going to go back to inches. Pressing set once again. We're now looking at how is the pressure going to read. It's set for inches of mercury right now. The plus button will elect, allow us to go to hectopascals, which is uh, used in uh, Europe. I'll go back to inches of mercury. Pressing set once again, our pressure is flashing. This is where we set the relative pressure for the area we're in. You can check that with your local weather bureau or a number of different online sites like Weather Underground. 29.91 is the default. It's 28.9 here. So I'm going to use the min max button and count back to 28.9. and I can just hold that down and it'll go a little faster. I went a little too far. I need to count up. I'll use the plus button to count up. I click the set button once again. It's going to ask me how much do I want, what kind of a pressure change changes my forecast. Unless you're living in the mountains, the desert, or on the seashore, you're just going to leave that .09. The system is now saying, when the pressure drops, at what point do you want an alarm? The default is 0.15 inches of mercury in an hour. If it drops, the system will give an alarm or be set to give an alarm. Pressing set once again. I have AOF, that means don't give the alarm. I don't want to hear it ring at 2 in the morning or at 2 in the afternoon for that matter. Pressing the plus button turns it to AON, A on. Now that alarm is turned on. If I don't want to hear it, I'll turn it back off. Pressing the set button once again, and the system is now in full operation. A note about the Beaufort scale in the center. Uh, people call about this every now and again. BFT is the Beaufort scale, and that basically tells us the effect of wind over open water. It's important to sailors. 
Uh, it's important to uh, people who live in tidal areas. And uh, more information on that is certainly available with many resources. You can always look it up on the internet. What we've done is we made a little bit of rain with our rain sensor just to check it. To find that rainfall amount, you press the set button, and you notice the wind speed turned to gust, and press the plus button. This will show our 24 hour rain. If we press the plus button again, it shows us the total rain. If we press the plus again, we're back to pressure. Wherever you leave this is where you're going to end up the next time you press that set button. We're showing zero rain right now, and it's very possible the batteries that I put into that unit are not uh, the greatest of shape. Uh, but one of the, uh, how to find that rain amount is one of the most common questions we get from people. Again, you press the set button. Wind speed is going to say gust. And just using the plus button, you go from pressure to 24 hour rain to total rain. People also ask, can I erase the 24 hour rainfall amount? No. You can't do that. The 24 hour rainfall amount resets to zero every 24 hours. They'll ask, can I erase the total rainfall amount? That one you can erase. Real simple to do. Once it's showing, you press the min max button and you just go through the min max until that total rainfall shows again. And when you get to that total rainfall, it says reset press the set button. Going through the min max shows you all of the different settings that you have. The minimum outdoor temperature and the time it was recorded. Maximum outdoor temperature and date and time. The dew point and date and time it was recorded at minimum and again at maximum. And so forth through the humidity settings, the wind chill settings, the pressure settings, and the wind speed settings and back to the rain. The system does come with a stand. The stand just snaps onto the bottom so that you can set it up at an angle.